thank you all for being here. I never thought uh, that I would ever have the honor to be here when I was sitting in our political party in Egypt, expecting it to get raided or bombed by Mubarak state security or their Islamist proxies. I never thought that I would ever be here when I was sitting in my study at night for 10 years waiting for the dawn visitors to come take me. That's what Egyptian security forces are called, the dawn visitors. The ones that come to blindfold, abduct, torture, or kill dissidents at night to betray us in our sleep when we least expect it. The only time in the day when we had our guards down. Which I always actually considered to be a confession on their part to their weakness and to our strength. But I also had the honor to fight for freedom by the side of secularist, Muslim, Christian, and atheist heroes who decided that their priority in life was to speak the truth and live free, or not live at all. We established the only secular capitalist pro-peace with Israel political party in the history of modern Egypt. A political party that Mubarak's regime rebuffed as a legal entity for being anti-theocracy and for being pro-peace with Israel twice. As clearly, we were the better preference and he did not want to lay out uh, as an option, he didn't want us to be an option to his pseudo-secular Sharia-based tyranny. While, while he daily terrorized us, he allowed Islamists full access to participate their dominance. The Muslim Brotherhood were never banned. I was banned. When they were in the parliament, I was forced into exile. A country that imprisons, rapes, exiles, and kills its dissident does not hold free and fair elections. Under Mubarak's regime, you could say death to Jews, death to Christians, to Israel, and to America, but you cannot say the opposite, as it can cost you your life, your family, your property, your income, and everything that you hold dear. And that also explains why there aren't enough of us in Egypt. I saw my close friends and allies suffer while state security daily reminded me, sometimes 20 to 50 times a day, with gruesome threats that I was going to be next. They abducted my friend, Mamdouh Shaw'i, and stabbed him with a knife. They abducted Amr Salah, imprisoned Hassan Ismail, and Karim Amr, and Michael Nabil, and put my picture with my friend, Muhammad Al-Badri, on an online hit list. Nine months ago, the military killed my friend Michael Mossad in cold blood in the streets of Cairo in front of his fiance that they called her, excuse my language, a whore, while they were screaming, Allahu Akbar. State security abducted my younger brother, Amir, from Tahrir Square, broke his teeth, and brutally beat him while calling him a Jew, that was Mubarak's regime, the ally of Israel and the West. They took him from Tahrir Square when he was with our friend Mahmoud Salim, who was also brutally beaten. While Amir and Mahmoud were held hostages in an unknown place, someone affiliated with state security that I will not name called me to try to bargain a deal with me. Uh, and the deal was that I would meet with Ahmed Shafiq, 
Mubarak's last prime minister and currently a candidate in Egypt's alleged presidential elections. But I, refu I refused to negotiate as I knew that compromise would endanger their lives. I knew that being a strong horse was our only mean of survival and few hours later they were both released. I'm only alive today and safe here in this great country that I love dearly because I understood that I could not fight evil by tolerating it. That it takes a victim to create a victimizer. <laughs> that it takes a victim to create a victimizer and it takes a willing dimmy to create an Islamist. And this does not only apply to individuals, but also applies to state policies. I knew that being a weak horse and compromise with evil was suicide. I know that the enemies of humanity are better at their game. That's why I could not afford to play by their rules. There is no such thing as courageous restraint. There is only submission or a courageous fight. I would like to thank everyone here, but first I would like to thank my mother for her choices to live strong with integrity and moral consistency that allowed her to put up with me, which certainly hasn't been easy. And my choices in life that cost us both separation, tears, and pain but we also were daily rewarded by our ability to fight for our own rights to pursue happiness. And thank you, Sarah Stern, for having me here and for believing in me and in my humanity and intellect when my country did not. Thank you, Dr. Pipes, for your alliance and friendship throughout the years and thank you, my wonderful friends who are with me here today to support me. And thank you, America, for giving me a home and rewarding me when Egypt ritually punished me for who I am. Thank you.